Okay, this lecture is going to go over adjusting journal entries. The reason that we need adjusting journal entries is because we are going to be um, doing the accrual method of accounting, which means that we record revenues when earned and expenses when incurred, irregardless of when we receive or pay out the cash. So, we're going to ask ourselves some questions. Did the work happen? So, if we are an attorney, we're asking ourselves, did the work happen? If it did, we're going to credit our fees earned. If it did not, say we have not yet done the legal services, then we will be crediting a liability called unearned fees, meaning that we owe them the work. If we incurred the expense, we'll go ahead and debit expense. But if it's going to benefit us in the future, like we prepaid some insurance that's going to cover us for the next six months, then instead we'll debit an expense. So we're going to recognize revenue, and again, that just means credit fees earned when we earn it, and expenses when we incur it to generate the revenue. What we mean by incur to generate the revenue is, for example, if you're at Walmart and Walmart wants to make some money, then they're going to need to pay a cashier to check you out. That's the expense that they incurred in order to generate the revenue. That's what we mean by that statement. All right, so this is all the opposite of cash basis, which would be more simplified. It would be credit revenue when you get money, debit expense when you pay money. That would be the cash basis but that is not allowed for gap purposes, so we will be doing the accrual basis of accounting. Because we're doing the accrual basis, we will need to make adjusting journal entries. And it's easiest to just show you examples, so that's what I'm gonna do. But before I show you the examples, let me go over the word accrual and the word deferral. In this situation, now we're breaking down the two types of adjusting journal entries. One is accrual, and in an accrual, basically, what I would say is that um, the event has happened, and I'll explain what, what I mean. Cash has not changed hands. All right, and what I mean by that is I've done the work or somebody's done the work for me if I'm doing an expense, but I have not paid the money or I have not received the money. That makes it an accrual. In an accrual, you will always see either a receivable or a payable. A deferral is a little bit different. In this case, I'm going to be deferring the recognition of the revenue or an expense until it has been earned or incurred. So in this case, I would say the event has not happened. I have not done the work or the work has not been done for me. The event has not happened, but cash has changed hands. So as we go through these, I want you to ask yourself, has the event happened? Has cash changed hands? and sort of get into the habit of looking at this deferral and accrual. All right, let's look at this one. Perform dental work on account. Okay, did I do the work? It says I performed it, so I did do the work, didn't I? All right, did I get the money? It says on account, so no, I did not get the money. That automatically puts it into an accrual, so I know I'm gonna have a receivable or a payable. Well, I'm doing the work, so I'm gonna eventually receive the money. So it'll be accounts receivable, and I can go ahead and do fees earned because I have done the work. And notice, this is an accrual. I have accrued my revenue because um, I did the work but I have not yet received it. Let's look at this one. Purchased office supplies on account. So here, I got some office supplies. This is the same thing that you would have done in the previous chapter. And I have not yet paid for them. Accounts payable. $500. That's just a normal entry that I would have made when I actually went to the store and bought them. Now, the adjusting journal entry comes when I count up my supplies at the end of the period and I determine that I only have, let's say, $100 left. So the adjusting journal entry is going to be if I only have $100 left, then I must have used up $400. And you can always look at that by saying, if I started off with 500 and I only have 100 left, then I must have used up 400 of them. All right, let's look at this one. Receive $500 for work to be performed in the future. All right, this is actually the first part of this is not the adjusting journal entry. When I got that money, I would have gone ahead and said, hey, I got some money. Hmm, performed in the future. Have I done the work? No. I owe them the work. So I'll do unearned revenue, which is a liability, which is why I credit it. All right, now, 
when the end of the month happens, I need to adjust it. So this is my adjusting journal entry when I say I've performed half that work. So I'm going to reduce my unearned revenue and I'm going to credit my fees earned for the amount that I have done. If I've done half the work, then I can put $250, because that's half of $500, into fees earned. So again, this first part is a regular journal entry. The second part is my adjusting journal entry when I'm updating it for the end of the month, showing how much that work I've done. All right, paid insurance for six months of $600 on February 1. This is not the adjusting journal entry. This is my entry I would have made when I actually paid that insurance. So what I would do is I would debit an asset because this insurance has not been used up yet. It's going to benefit me for six months, which is the future. So I'm going to say prepaid insurance, which is an asset, debit it for $600, and then I paid cash, so I credit it for $600. So that is not an adjusting journal entry. It's easy to tell because it has cash in it. If it has cash, it's not an adjusting journal entry. All right, now, on March the 31st, that's the end of a quarter, I need to make some financial statements, so I need to update my records. Well, I don't still have a whole asset of $600 because some time has gone by. To figure out how much time has gone by, I would count all of February, since it started on the 1st of February, and all of March. So two months have gone by. So I'm going to do a calculation. I'm going to say that... If I originally paid $600 for six months worth of insurance, I can divide that and find out that 600 divided by six is $100 a month worth of insurance. That's how much it's costing me per month. Well, if two months have gone by, then I can then multiply that by two and find out that I have used up $200 worth of insurance. So this entry right here is going to be showing that insurance has been used up, so I can go ahead and put it into the insurance expense account, $200, and then I need to show that prepaid insurance is no longer an asset worth $600, instead it's worth $400. So if I credit it for $200, it'll get down to that. So how am I doing that? Well, I'm saying if I were to look at this into a T account, which is just a very simplified way for accountants to look and see what's happening. So I'm going to make myself a little T account right here. And I'm going to always look at my balance sheet account because it makes it easy. All right, I originally put $600 in here. Then on March the 31st, I took out $200. So how much do I have left in that account? Debits minus the credit shows me that I have $400 worth of insurance coverage left. That'll cover me for the next four months. Okay. Now we're going to talk about depreciation. So depreciation is how we show that we have allocated some of the costs of an asset to periods of time. So if you remember, the cost principle says that we're going to put our equipment on the books at cost and keep it there. That's still true. We purchased some equipment for $10,000 inside the equipment account, you will only see $10,000. We will not reduce that for the wear and tear on that, on, on that equipment. However, we will reduce that through a contra account called accumulated depreciation. So here's how that's going to work. When we first bought that equipment, we did debit equipment, credit cash, $10,000. Okay? But over time, we're going to get to expense out that equipment as we use it up. In this case, we're going to say that that equipment is going to last us 10 years. So, $10,000 divided by 10 years. Every year, we can expense $1,000, and we're going to do that in an account called depreciation expense. We don't have an account called equipment expense. That would make more sense, but instead we use depreciation expense because our um, cost is actually the depreciation of that equipment. All right, so we're going to debit depreciation expense, and then we're going to credit accumulated depreciation. This is what's known as a contra asset account, contra to the equipment account. If we want to know how much is in our equipment account, we would look at the equipment account, which would always have $10,000 in it, and then we would look at the accumulated depreciation account, which would have a credit balance. And let's say we would put $1,000 into it. If you look at the equipment account and the accumulated depreciation account together, you will see that your equipment is now worth 
10,000 minus 1,000, which is $9,000. All right, now we don't get to actually record a whole year's worth of equipment um, depreciation. That would be too easy. This example, oh yeah, we actually we do. Look, January 1, and then on December 31st, we're going to record the journal entry. So we do get to do a whole year. So we're going to record $1,000. So at that point in time, the equipment is worth the equipment, which is 10000 minus its accumulated depreciation, which is 1000 meaning it has a net book value of $9,000. After year two, accumulated depreciation would hold a balance of $2,000 in it, and at that point, the net book value of your equipment would then be $8,000. And it would go all the way down, and after year 10, your net book value of that equipment would be zero. But that doesn't mean you're not still using the equipment. That's why we still see the $10,000 in the equipment, and the accumulated depreciation is just um, going to be right beside it so that you can see what the book value is. Okay. So that is a brief overview, and in the next lecture, I will actually work um, a problem out of the textbook for some more examples.